Welcome to Magazine of the World, an international program about human rights with international analysis, geopolitical analysis. I am Juan Carlos Vallejo. Thank you for staying with me for a few minutes. And we have many topics today. First of all, I want to dedicate this program and all my programs for my friend Gonzalo Lira, assassinated, tortured in Ukraine by the government of Zelensky. Uh, still, we don't know what happened really with Gonzalo Lira because when the families were requesting the body for an autopsy, the government burned his body and it was not possible to know the reasons why he died. And still, we are expecting an investigation from the U.S. government because Gonzalo was an American citizen born in the United States. And he had the second citizenship from Chile because his parents are Chileans. And the government of Chile keep the same silence of the American government. Very sad. And we, we have um, today an important news about Juliana Assange, two judges in United Kingdom. If we can put first this, sec, thank you, thank you. Uh, two judges in United Kingdom, they are taking the decision if the extradition of Juliana Assange to the United States procedure or not. Uh, if they accept the appeal by the lawyers of Juliana Assange, it will be another round in the United Kingdom to try to find the freedom of Juliana Assange. The, the crime was to exercise the real journalism to denounce the crimes of the military-industrial complex in Iraq. That was the crime of Julian Assange, to be a journalist. And we are, any moment, maybe we can make a cut if we know something about the decision of the judges in the United Kingdom. At the same time, back to Gonzalo Lira, we have a very important analysis about how the deaths of Gonzalo Lira and Navalny were covered by the media. And this uh, graphic, you can see how practically was most important for the corporate media the death of Navalny that, of course, is important because he was a, a opposite political opposition against Putin. He was a political prisoner. The government of Russia say no, he was a guy who was corrupt. And he's here because he tried to organize a revolution against the, the government. Any reason that they have in, uh, Navalny in jail, they need to explain what happened with him. He said it was a natural causes, the, the death of Navalny. But all the corporate media cover Navalny many times. And look what happened with Gonzalo Lira. Practically nothing. And he was American citizen, born in the United States. He was the source for many of us who are working in independent media. And he was arrested, tortured, and assassinated. And still no investigations. Silent from the United Nations, silent from the Human Rights Watch, silent from Amnesty International. The government of the USA don't say anything about that. The same the Chilean government. And practically, we don't know what happened really with Gonzalo Lira. And we have another journalist, prisoner, Spaniard, 
uh, Pablo González. He is in Poland arrested without trial, without accusations, and we don't know why the Spaniard government don't say anything about his citizen. That's very, very bad for the journalists because they are making the job. They are making the homework. They are making the, 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 the world of journalists to denounce what happened really in Ukraine. And Pablo Gonzalez was arrested and they say that he was spying in favor of Russia when he was in Poland covering the war between NATO and Russia. Uh, another topic that we have for today is what it means the proxy war. Proxy war is what we are living right now between Ukraine and NATO, uh, NATO and, and Russia. The definition of proxy war is a military conflict in which third parties support one or more combatants to advance their own interests. That's what we saw right now when the European Union, United States, it means NATO members, send guns, weapons, ammunition to Ukraine to continue fighting against the Russian Federation. They are not taking directly the, the combat against Russia, but they send mercenaries, they send ammunition, they send money, they send guns, weapons, everything to Ukraine. That is a proxy war. That is the definition of proxy war. I, I wonder if maybe Steve can to put the exactly more, more, more small. Oh, it's too big? Okay, all right, sorry. But that is the definition of what it means a proxy war. Again, it's a military conflict in which third parties support one, in this case Ukraine, or more combatants to advance their own interests. And what is the interest of NATO? Well, the same interest that they have when they destroy the old Yugoslavia. Yeah, divide and create small countries, and it's more easy to control them. And most, most of that countries are now in members of the European Union, some of them are members of NATO, unfortunately. NATO is a big machine to produce refugees. That's the, the definition that I have from NATO. A big machine, a war machine to produce refugees. Um, a terrorist attack. No exist good terrorists, no exist more or less bad or more or less good terrorists. No, terrorist is bad. That's the definition, it's bad. And we're sorry about the terrorist attack in Krokus City Hall, close to Moscow, Moscow where 100, right now they say 139 innocent people die, and they have another 180 wounded in sun and very bad condition. We don't know exactly if that people uh, will survive or no. Children, elders, uh, adults, uh, young people, female, male, terrible situation close to Moscow when four terrorists uh, attack and kill many people, 139 right now, and probably will be more because the wounded people are in very bad conditions. For me, I, I have questions about that attack. For example, if they were fundamentalists, if they were members of ISIS, why they made that attack during the Ramadan? The Ramadan is a sacred month for Muslims. And they are fundamentalists for more reason. Another thing that called my attention is the money. They did that for money, not for religion's convictions. 
why why they called that was the ISIS or maybe it's a cover up operation and they want to say that no it was ISIS uh, Ukraine have no nothing in this attack it's, I, I I totally disagree about that call the people were fundamentalist because the fundamentalists they die in the same crime scene uh, because for there to be a martyr uh, is, is the best for them. And why these people run away to pick up the rest of the money? They don't, that, that's no a good explanation for a fundamentalist uh, in the month of the Ramadan. And they did that for money, no, because the religion conviction. It's very, very strange. And I hope the investigation go deeply and find finally who was the author, the, the intellectual author of this attack, because they catch the four terrorists and other people who suppose, I suppose they, they sold the car, they are under investigation, and other people that were help, helping the terrorists to escape for the border in Ukraine, they were captured, captured there. And still we don't know really who is behind this attack because they put immediately ISIS, immediately ISIS. But ISIS is a fundamentalist group. They attack during the Ramadan for money. And they don't die in the, the, the crime scene. They run away to pick up the rest of the money. That's a strange fundamentalist. And anyway, that's the investigation that maybe an international panel must to conduct or the Russian Federation. Another topic that is important for us today is the point of view of the Europeans about the war. Initially, the, the Europeans support that the European Union be involved helping Ukraine. But now, like this graphic shows, the situation is changing. There's more people that is against than the people in favor. Some people have no interest. Some people have no idea what happened. But in Europe, Greece, Hungary, Italy, Austria, France, Romania, Spain, Germany, Netherlands, Portugal, Sweden, Poland, the people are, have another perception now about the war. And every day, every day they are more sceptic about that possibility that Ukraine win the war. In my opinion, they lost the war months ago. And just like the Pope Francis say, they need to make a, a peace agreement soon because at the end they will not have any country to negotiate because Russia is taking big part of the territory of Ukraine, and now some members of NATO are requesting some territories that years ago were taken by the Soviet Union. And at the end, practically, Ukraine will be Kiev only, because the other countries around, Romania, Poland, uh, Moldavia and are requesting territories that they lose with the Soviet Union. And it would be important right now to encourage the government in Ukraine to negotiate a peace agreement about that because many people in Ukraine is dying, plus the mercenaries from different countries. And we are close to the nuclear war if this situation continues. Because now it's very possible the missiles that the Germany is planning to send to Ukraine can to go directly to the center of Russia. 
And the answer from Russia will be a nuclear war. Be sure about that. Of if NATO start to send troops, they are there, of course, from the beginning, but officially send the troops to Ukraine, that is the reason for Russia to use the nuclear bombs. And nobody will win that war. Nobody. Um, now we have a, a speech at the European Parliament. Very interesting because it is the position. No, nobody watch that in the local or uh, American media. They don't show that. And it's a member of the European Parliament who requests for uh, von der Leyen about the situation with the farmers. They, they say the farmers have no money, but you are sending money to Ukraine. And that shows that you know, have interest in the farmers of uh, the European farmers. Just you have money is to the military industrial complex to increase more guns, weapons, and make more wars, but not to help the farmers who are requesting for a long time ago help and money to continue their work. And it's very interesting. Please listen this statement by the member of the European Parliament. Merci, Madame la Présidente de la Commission européenne. Vous avez exprimé avec vraiment grande éloquence tout votre mépris pour la classe travailleuse en Europe aujourd'hui. Je sais que vous vous gagnez 30 000 euros par mois, mais est-ce que vous savez qu'aujourd'hui, en Europe, 30% des gens doivent sauter un repas parce qu'ils n'ont pas d'argent pour un repas The Europeans, the farmers, the Europeans are requesting for a long time ago uh, money, they are facing very hard situation with the heater, the cold temperatures, and she cut the, increase the cost of the energy, the electricity, the pharmacy, the produce of the, the medicines. She said that she, will, she gave many money for the military industrial complex, but nothing for the workers. Le retour de l'austérité, Madame Van der Leyen, cette Europe, they votre say, Europe, Mr. Von der Leyen, autre, on vous combattra, vous they, we will fight against you, against your coalition, because they are not happy with her. That woman is only giving money and money on money for the military industrial complex and nothing for the European farmers. That's why in Poland and, and France and Netherlands and Spain, they have every time on the street the farmers a big protest against the governments because they need money. They need the, to buy or to renew the, the machinery and they don't have money. But that government, they have money for the military industrial complex. Every time you can see the news, millions and millions and millions to Ukraine, millions and millions and millions to the military industrial complex to buy guns and weapons for the war between NATO and Russia. Perfidy. What it means perfidy? Constitutes a breach of the law of war. The law of war is right now the international law. International law is before the name was the law of war. But now we call international law. After the Geneva Conventions, we start to call international law. Uh, uh, so it's a war crime, and it degrades the protections and mutual restraints developed in the interest of all parties, combatants, and civilians. Perfidy is what, we, what you will see in this video when uh, an ambulance, let me see, yeah, yes, the video of perfidy, please. An ambulance carry up military with guns, with uniform, and they use the ambulance to escape. That's the crime of perfidy. Another crime of perfidy was in Colombia with the operation checkmate to rescue a hostage 
the military use the clots of the Red Cross. And they used the symbol of the Red Cross in a military helicopter. And most of the people that were inside that helicopter were armed people with uniforms. But some of them that were military used, and they were no members of the Red Cross, they were using the clothes, the distinctives, the signs of the Red Cross. And that is perfect crime. And it's very common to see in many conflicts the, some of the groups that are fighting use the symbol of the Red Cross to escape or to transport an ambulance, uh, guns, or to avoid the, the, the combat with some of the other uh, groups, and they use the symbol of the Red Cross to escape. And that is the perfidy crime. And this video was taken when soldiers from Ukraine escape using the ambulance, and that's why the Russian government denounced that that is a perfidy crime because they use the ambulance to escape, to transport military with guns, and they not attack because they say that's people in ambulance, we cannot do anything against them. But at the end, when they start to analyze the video, they discovered they were military using the ambulance. And that's very common in many conflicts, but that's no legal. It's against the international law. It's against the, 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 the world law. Before we call world law, now it's international law. And this a crime, a war crime, to use ambulance or signs of the Red Cross or some humanitarian, the the half moon cross that is a half moon uh, in, 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 in the Muslim countries to escape or to use that to avoid any conflict with another group. And that's totally illegal. But it's common in the conflict. That's why nobody in the world respects the international law. Another topic important about this situation that has happened with, oh, okay, is the book. Some people send me an email asking, oh, uh, why you recommend that book? I recommend that book because you, you want to understand Israel. You want to understand how the lobby works. You need to read that book. I, in my opinion, that book must be mandatory in any political uh, science class because explain exactly what it means, the lobby of Israel, and what it means to be Semitic. Not all Jewish are Semitics. Like not all uh, Muslims are, and all Arabs are Muslims. And that's explained, for example, the Hazards, the Sephardis, the Ashkenazis are different. For example, Netanyahu is not Semitic. I'm sorry, but that's, you need to read that, that book, The Shalom Osan, The Invention of the Jewish People, because Netanyahu is not Semitic. And he is part of the other uh, group of the Jewish people, but it's not Semitic. And that is very important to understand the difference because the Palestinians, some Palestinians are Semitic too. I don't know why when the people say Semitic is only Jews. No, Palestinians are Semitic too because it's a linguistic family. You need to be very clear about that. It's the same, the Bantu. The so Bantu family is a linguistic family. 
Palestine. The title of my program today was how to call, how not call, how not to call genocide when it's a genocide. It's, it's impossible for any person who has more or less idea about what international law means not call the situation in Palestine genocide. From the beginning, when the, this map shows clearly how the situation in, in Palestine was every day, every year, more difficult for the Palestinians. Practically now, Palestine is disappeared from the map of the Israel and kill complete families, destroy the religion. They cannot, they cannot go for the mosque because the military prohibit to go to the mosque. They cannot and make their ceremonies because they prohibit the ceremonies. And every day die children, women, elders, adults, innocent people, civilians, thousands and thousands. Now the amount is around 40,000 people. Of course, of course, the situation, the answer of, of Israel was because the attack. But remember what we were talking in the last program. That attack came precisely when the people of Israel were on the streets requesting the resignation of Netanyahu, a trial against Netanyahu for corruption. Thousands of people in Israel were on the street and the attack came. And came from who? From the Hamas. And we know who created the Hamas. And it's very interesting because the proposal of Hamas for the peace is ceasefire, a change of prisoners. For example, in the map that you see that in the, in the monitor, in the map is no Palestinian there. The Pal Palestine disappeared in that map because the plan of Netanyahu is to create the new Israel, the new Middle East, and Palestine is no in that plan. And they will take the Gaza, they will take Gaza and they will take the, the, the West Bank to explode the oil and gas and export to Europe. But Palestinians are not there. And back again, the Hamas, the proposal of the Hamas is ceasefire and exchange the prisoners. You cannot see in any statement of Hamas talking about the creation or respect of the both states, the existence, the coexistence of both states, Israel and Palestine. They don't think about that. Why not? Why not? Because if Israel is not recognized by some Arab and Muslim countries like a state, because remember, Iran not consider Israel a state. If Israel and the international community not recognize Palestine like a state, it's impossible the peace. Have no solution. The definition of genocide is the intentional destruction of a people in world or in part. In 1948, the United Nations Genocide Convention defined genocide as any of the five acts committed with intent to destroy in wall or in part a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group. That's what, that's what we are seeing right now in Palestine. I, I, I cannot see, I cannot say another thing. It's a genocide. It's totally in accordance with the definition of the United Nations. They're destroying everything, everything. And that's why, in my opinion, that is a genocide, and I cannot call here, for example, the people in, in Israel protesting against Netanyahu, the people back again to the streets. That is a part of the solution, the reaction of the Israel people. They have part of the solution. 
The other solution is the recognition of the state of Israel or the state of Palestine. Both. Respect the borders. I don't know if 1948 or 1968, that's a decision that they need to take in the conversation. But if you saw the statements of Hamas, they never say about the recognition of the state of Palestine. They don't talk about that. Only ceasefire are exchanged the prisoners. Very strange. Very strange. Um, <coughs> the canal, that is another of the plans of Netanyahu uh, with Palestine. Delete Palestine and create a canal Ben Gurion Canal to now use the Suez Canal that is more money for Egypt than for Israel. The Ben Gurion Canal is a plan that they have to make and they don't need a Palestine, they don't need the, the Gaza, they don't need nothing there. And that is the plan. That's why Palestine was not on the map when he was talking in the United Nations. That's directly the idea that they have. And the, again, the international community plus the people in Israel, they need to make the force together to put in jail this corrupt guy, Netanyahu, because he's very corrupt. That's why the people in Israel was on the streets requesting the resignation at or a trial against him. Uh, the President Lula da Silva in Brazil, he made the following statement about the situation in Palestine. Please, uh, Steve, you can roll around the... Yeah. It's very hard. It's, it's very hard to keep silent and say, no, that's not a genocide. No, no. it's impossible. We, I, 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 it's impossible not, call, not to call genocide when it's a genocide. It's impossible. It's impossible. You have a minimum of knowledge about the international law, about about the, the system of the humanity, some, some sense of humanity. You, you need to recognize that we are before a genocide. The same like the people who was facing the Holocaust, the, 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 the Jewish Holocaust. Now we need to recognize the Palestinian people are suffering for this situation. And it's independent if it's it's not anti-Semitic to say that, because it's a crime that they are committed against that people. And the same people in Israel are protesting, are on the streets against the government of Netanyahu. That's why the corporate media hide that, because they have fear of the Israel lobby. No, no, you need to read the books, the Israel lobby and the creation of the Jewish people because that is the explanation of what Israel is. And that's not to be anti-Semitic, it's understand what Israel is. And you can speak fluently with evidence, without fear that there's some crazy people will put your name in a list, like anti-Semitic list. Don't be afraid about that. No, no, no fear about that because you have arguments, you have evidence, you need to read that book. It's, in my opinion, must be mandatory in any class of political science, have two books to read about Israel, because that's the explanation what Israel is. Uh, some friends send me emails requesting, uh, again, the map about uh, 1848 about the Africa 
uh, why Niger and many other countries are in rebellion against the Europeans? Well, because after the meeting in Berlin, they divide Africa like a cake. They take the French take some part for them. Germany took another part for them. United Kingdom another part. And they divide all Africa like a cake. Pieces for everyone. Portugal, for Spain, for uh, Italy. All divided Africa. To explode, to take the natural resources and nothing for the people. That's why the people in Africa are very poor, but the continent is very rich. And the contradiction is that because the Europeans, the, the colonialism, take everything for them and nothing for the people. And the statement of the military in power right now in, in Niger, they say that they don't need Germany. They don't bring, Europeans don't bring nothing for Africa than exploitation of our resources, wars, terrorists, and dictators. And that's true. That's true. They are not lying about that. And that's why they request the French to leave Africa because they don't want to see them again. The same that they were, the Europeans remember in Indochina. What happened in Indochina? The Vietnam War, before France and after the United States. What happened in Iraq? What happened in Libya? Now Africa opened the eyes and changed the situation. And many countries every day in Africa requesting to be more independent, to, make, to take the control of the natural resources for them. And negotiate everything with all countries around the world, not only with a small colonialist community like the European Union. Elections in the United States. I was traveling around the United States for close to a month, from north to the south, west to the east, east to the west, south to the north, all the United States. I can say that, and I have evidence that I was traveling around the United States. What I saw is a country divided, very divided, between two blocks, pro-Trump, pro-Biden. And it's very dangerous because I saw the people very radical, each group very radical against the other one. And I am smelling, unfortunately, I am smelling a civil war. It's very possible a civil war in the United States because the two blocks are extremely, extremely, extremely radicalized against the other one. And, and we don't have a, a middle point to say, OK, I don't want this guy, I don't want this guy, I, I, I will vote for this. It's complicated because we have only two parties that at the end are the same, and, and the people have no other option. And that's very problematic. Because in the United States, we need more parties. Every time the United States is requesting the other countries more democracy, more parties, more participation. But here, we have two parties that are practically the same and defend, defend the same interests. They are pro-military industrial complex. They are pro-war. And, and that is the problem. And that, the moment, the moment that we are facing right now is a country very divided. And I am very worried because I saw that. I saw that I was talking with the people. I was visiting many cities, big cities. And 
the, you feel, when you are there, you feel the, the division. You feel the, I, I don't want to say hate, but something similar to hate from one group against the other group. And that's very dangerous. Because I came from a country with a long time civil war. And I'm, I know what is the war means. A war means death. A war means poverty. And I am very worried about that, to, to face again that situation. We are going to Venezuela. The same situation in Venezuela, some group very radical, very violent. They, for example, destroy a statue of Simon Bolivar in Italy. That was last year. And just because they, are, they disagree about the current government in Venezuela. If you disagree about the government in Venezuela, create your own political party and participate in elections. For example, we have election on July 28th in Venezuela. And we have 11 candidates, different parties. Okay, choose what do you want. Ah, because I don't want that, and, and that's not democracy. Oh, sorry, but how is possible some people in the United States say that they don't have democracy because they don't have the party that I want or they don't have the candidate that I want? No. They have, they have their rules very clear, and 11 candidates are participating right now for July 28th in the elections in Venezuela. Again, it's a big possibility uh, that they have maybe another candidate win against the current uh, uh, president, but you need to go and vote. Not to destroy the status, not to make threats against the government or or, or call the other governments to invade Venezuela just because the candidate that I want cannot run because have legal problems. That's no democracy. Democracy is this. 11 candidates are running, and one of them will be the president in Venezuela. Okay, go, choose one, and vote. That's the solution. No the violence. Like some candidate that cannot be running because have many legal problems, uh, say that if she is not running, she called for violence or invasions against Venezuela. That's no democracy. That's totally against the democracy. And destroying the status of Simón Bolívar, that is a symbol for us in Latin America. That's all for today. I'm sorry, I, was, I promised in my first program to talk about the UFOs, but the situation and the world changed. We don't have news yet about the Juliana Assange, the judges that we take the decision about if Juliana Assange will be sent to the United States or accept the, the appeal for the lawyers. We are expecting Juliana Assange back to his home with a free man like he deserved. And again, I dedicate my program to my good friend, Gonzalo Lira. I, I am still am shocking about that because we were very good friends. And I cannot, I cannot understand that situation, that he's not anymore with us. Thank you. and. We will see you in other program. Thank you so much. I am Juan Carlos Vallejo, and this is Magazine of the World.